what's up y'all welcome back to the channel welcome back to their glory today um i'm doing something a little bit different i'm digging into some of the comments that you guys have left under my recent videos these videos are a chance for us to have a real conversation because i feel like i'm always talking to you guys coming up with these topics thinking about what do you guys want to learn based on my um my learnings and we never really have a chance to talk to one another um, some of us do but most of us don't so um yeah this just gives us a chance to talk and have some real dialogue um so i can respond directly to you guys and your ideas and your thoughts our first comment today comes from eric swain someone who's been collecting for over 20 years and they made some really insightful points under one of my recent videos which is about understanding different types of art collecting and they shared how collecting in the art world is a journey and that's that it's important not to pigeonhole yourself um let me read their comment to you let's pull it up he said great video pigeonholing is a bit constraining as collecting in the art world is a journey and one may or may not shift their position at any or any time i know i have um, being too rigid in one aspect can be okay but living limiting in another and closing one off for the benefits of collecting i've been collecting and researching art for 20 plus years and i found that to benefit the most from collecting etc one may want to experience and immerse oneself into um, another avenue of the art world even trying to become an artist i did just that first of all thank you so much eric for um, sharing your thoughts and your extensive experience I uh, really, really appreciate it. It's so valuable to have perspectives like yours in these discussions. And you touched on some really important points. The idea that the art world is um, existing in the art world is a journey and it's not linear. Um, these videos that I make, I do structure them in a way to where you can leave the video and have some type of understanding. Um, of course, like I respect and I appreciate perspectives that allow us to see um, that it isn't linear. There are multiple points you could take in the art world. My entry point to the art world was fashion. And I have my degree in public relations. I made it a point to focus on fashion. I lived in New York for a little bit, uh, in turn with Stella McCartney and Philip Block. That was my entry into the arts. And from there, I started exploring myself as an artist and then as an arts educator. I taught art to high school students and middle school students. So by all means, explore different aspects because if I didn't teach, I probably wouldn't be here wanting to teach um, on YouTube. But without having, you know, without, but having a structured, a structured point could be helpful, but be open to changing new experiences because that type of flexibility, it allows you to grow in ways that you may not anticipate. And that's what makes this journey so enriching. So I agree with you. Um, I encourage, I am an advocate for everyone watching to continue exploring, exploring and experiencing the art world and all of its facets and all of its diversity. Whether you're a collector, if you're an artist, um, if you're just simply an enthusiast, there's always something new to learn and discover. If you're a collector, take a pottery class, take an arts class. It might open you up to process and understanding process a little bit more. I encourage you. Um, and for me, this journey includes being an advocate um, for um, education, period, and exploration, period. So, yeah, I'm an advocate. Thank you again for your thoughts, your thoughtful comment. Um, I love to hear more about the avenues you guys are exploring in the art world. So feel free. So just feel free to share more. Question two. Our next comment came under a video where I focused on 10 black artists who are doing amazing work in the art world. Um, the commenter, I can't really, his name was like, it wasn't like a clear name. It was like, you know, letters and numbers together. But the commenter expressed some concern that I was focusing only on black artists. And he suggested that it was a suggestion of a tendency of America to divide people. Let me read the comment. They're all black, which is why they're on your list. By focusing solely on their skin color, you're diminishing their artistic identity. These individuals are not African. They're African-American. I'm sorry. He said, these individuals are not African. They're American. 
only one person on your list is af actually from Africa. I guess he's referring to the fact that maybe I say within the video, I call black people African-Americans, which is standard um, in what we say in America. Um, to be called a black artist and a, or a woman artist instead of an artist. Americans love to divide where there is not, make issues and divide where there's not said. First of all, I want to thank you for sharing your thought. Um, I understand where you're coming from, and I appreciate the opportunity to have this conversation. First of all, this conversation could be an hour long, two hour long. We could dig, we could dive, we can go so deep into this conversation, but let's start by addressing the idea that um, I focus on black artists. It's important to recognize that black artists are historically marginalized within our world for so many years. Their contributions were overlooked and still underrepresented in major galleries and museums and undervalued um, in comparison to their white counterparts. This is not just an American issue, it's a global issue. Though it might manifest differently in different contexts, in the United States where I'm based, the legacy of systematic racism has had a crazy impact on all areas of society, including the arts. So a long time, the white, for a long time, For a long time, the art world um, has excluded black humans and black people. And damn near all opportunities were excluded. And their work was often relegated to the margins. And a lot of times it still is. Even today, despite progress, black artists are still fighting for the same recognition and opportunities that have been more readily available to others. When I choose to spotlight black artists, it's not about dividing or excluding. It's about correcting and imbalance and giving these incredibly talented individuals the recognition that they deserve. It's about shining that light on voices that have been silenced and overlooked for way too long. This isn't about limiting the conversation to only black artists, but about making sure that their contributions are given the space to respect the spaces that they deserve alongside other artists. Art's a powerful tool, you know? Um, it's a powerful tool. And by focusing on black artists, I'm not dividing. I'm expanding the conversation to include those who have historically been excluded. I for sure want everyone to feel seen. Um, and don't get me wrong, I love many artists, <laughs> but I have and I do make a choice to spotlight black artists. I want everyone to feel seen. I want everyone to feel valued. And I want everyone to feel celebrated for their contributions to the art world. And I encourage you and everyone watching to explore our forms of art that resonate with you. The art world is vast and it's diverse. And there's so much to learn from so many different perspectives. But for me, as someone who is deeply connected to the history and experiences of black people in America, I do feel responsible to champion these artists unapologetically. Their stories, their art, and their voices are way too important to be overlooked. So while I continue to spotlight black artists and their work, I do that with the understanding that this is just one or a part of a much larger um, world. You know, so... I'm going to continue to spotlight black artists and their work. I will, and, and I won't apologize for it. I'm committed to celebrating diversity in all of its forms, but I'm, and I'm here to encourage everyone to do the same. But I still want to thank you for your comment and engaging in such a really important conversation. I hope we keep pushing for a more inclusive art world where all of these voices are heard and we can celebrate diversity um, of humans and our creativity. I love to hear your thoughts below. Let's continue this discussion in the comments, please, because I really enjoy getting into these uh, comments today and sharing my thoughts back with you out loud. Your thoughts and your insights is what makes this community so very special. And I'm planning to do more of these videos because I want to keep the conversation going and make sure that we're connecting on a deeper level. If you enjoyed this format, let me know in the comments below. I really love to hear your feedback. Before I head back, I'm actually about to go meet a friend at a coffee shop and I got some work to do today. And I wanna give you guys a head up of what's coming next. I have a new video, it's with my editor right now, that should be dropping next Monday 
at 10 a.m. I don't always want to wait for those edits, which is why I think I want to like explore doing videos like this. They're a little bit more raw, a lot less edited. Um, yeah, but the video next Monday that's dropping at 10 a.m. is all about overcoming exhibition challenges. So if you're an artist and you ever face those struggles or those challenges or you're planning an exhibition, this video is going to be for you. Um, also, I have a few webinars coming up that I really don't want you to miss. They're free. And the first is the Essentials to Exhibition Planning, which will happen on September 4th between 7 and 7.30 Eastern. And I just realized that the 4th was Beyonce's birthday. My friend made me realize it, that I was going to be doing a webinar on Beyonce's birthday. So y'all better come because I usually celebrate Beyonce's birthday. Um, so yeah, it's from September 4th between 7 and 7.30. The second one is called Introduction to Art Collecting. And that one's going to happen on September 18th between 7 and 7.30 Eastern. Again, those are both free. So I really encourage you to sign up. The details are in the description below. The reason I'm really focusing on exhibition planning so much is I've gotten so many questions about people, you know, not really knowing what to do and not really knowing how to jump into planning their first exhibition. So in addition to these videos and these webinars, I am also um, writing a workbook. And I'm really, really, really excited about it. Um, it's taking up a lot of my time lately. I'm just about finished with it. It's, it's damn near 200 pages. It's full of tips and guides and worksheets and examples of what you should do while you're planning your exhibition. I'm telling you, it's, it's very meticulous. I created it for myself to keep myself organized. And I realized how helpful it would be for an artist or an aspiring curator or a curator that's really trying to be incredibly organized while planning the exhibition. So yeah, got some real cool stuff coming up that I want you guys to, you know, just stay on the lookout for. Um, if you want to dig deeper into the topic of exhibition planning, in my experiences, I just uploaded a, about a 15 minute video, free talk video on my Patreon, where I candidly um, discussed the challenges I faced in the last with the last exhibition I put on. You guys may be familiar about that in Tender Peaks, Grace Unfolds, because I talked about it here. It's a raw and it's a real video, and I think you'll find it really valuable because I, I navigated a lot of challenges through that exhibition. Um, it's in my Patreon, so check that out. Check my Patreon. I called the Patreon the Dear Glory Collective. Um, I think it is really, really useful. It is where we can have more community discussions and have more community and talk more like this. Um, and also do like some live questions and answers, some live discussions, some discussions in the chat. I have a book club going up for both artists and collectors where we're reading through some amazing books to help you along your both your artist and collector journey. Um, I'm dropping crazy amount of resources in there to help you along your journeys. Um, it's a lot going on in the Patreon that I think you'll find very, very helpful. So just go check it out and see if you want to join. Um, don't forget to keep up with the community tab either because I'm pretty much giving daily updates there. So you can kind of stay in the loop with everything that's going on. So yeah, let me know what you guys think about this type of video. I really appreciate y'all, man. <laughs> I've never got to celebrate the fact that we've got to 10,000 subscribers, which is amazing. It's an amazing milestone. I can't believe 10,000 of y'all want to hear me nerd out about art and my experiences and my perspective in the art world. <laughs> it's, it's actually kind of crazy. I've never seen it coming. I'm just here just being here and you guys are here supporting. Um, I've connected with so many people. Ooh, it's hot. Like I'm, I know y'all can tell I'm sweating. But it's incredible. It's a blessing from God to be able to have a community that's um, just not just here in Houston. That's everywhere. So I just want to thank you guys so much for watching. Um, and don't forget to leave your thoughts and your comments. I see y'all in the next video. I'm about to turn this air on. Didn't want to have it on because I didn't want y'all to hear it in the background. But woof, it's hot in here. I'm in Texas. Remember that. All right, I'll talk to y'all later. All right, peace, bye.